Hey everyone, Cynthia here with The Nameless Homestead and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a simple farmer's cheese with fresh goat's milk. This is a really simple, lovely cheese, just about 30 minutes out of work, a couple of ingredients, and a couple of tools. Nothing fancy, no cultures, just a nice, simple farmer's cheese for beginners. So let's go over the ingredients and tools we'll be needing today. For tools, all we're gonna need is some cheesecloth and some straining devices, especially if you want a nice crumbly feta-like cheese. You want to create a setup for yourself that will allow you to really get the cheese worked and really press the whey out of the cheese. And then for our cooking ingredients, all we'll need is goat's milk and vinegar. All we need to do is get this to curdle. So to do so, we need an acid. For this acid, I'm going to be using a quarter cup of general white vinegar to a half gallon of goat's milk. There are other recipes doing the same thing that you can use citric acid or lemon juice to get the same result. So our first step in the process is we're going to be getting this goat's milk up to about 190 degrees or just to a very low boil. Now, if you're more cautious, you can definitely use a double boiler if this is your first time making goat's cheese and you're not comfortable heating up milk slowly. It might be wise to use a double boiler, but I'm pretty brave and I've done this a time or two, so I'm just using one standard pot. Once we have the cheese made, there's going to be an important decision to make and to think about now while the milk is heating, and that's whether or not you want to add herbs and other goodies and whether or not you want a smooth, creamy cheese or if you want a more crumbled feta-like cheese. The only difference here is going to be how much of the whey that we reserve when we strain our cheese. If you do want to make a smooth, creamy cheese, I would suggest using a stand mixer. If you have one available, it makes life a lot easier, a little easier um, on the hands because there is kind of a kneading or mixing action to make that happen. And if you want herbs or other goodies to put in your cheese, now would be the time to get those out and prep those. For my cheese today, I will be using salt, pepper, onion powder, and basil. Looks about right. We got our milk up to about 190 degrees. Time to watch the magic happen and add our vinegar. And immediately starts to separate. At this point, we can go ahead and take it off the heat. We're gonna let our curds and whey cool until it's reasonable to handle. I find this takes about 15, 20 minutes. Now that my cheese mixture is cool enough to handle safely, about 10 or 15 minutes later for me, let's go ahead and get this puppy strained, seasoned, and shaped. Now this is where you decide whether or not you want crumbly like feta cheese or if you want soft creamier cheese. If you want soft creamier cheese, go ahead and take your cheese out of the strainer here, pop it in something like a stand mixer or a bowl, and you'll be reserving some of the whey which has separated below to mix back into the cheese paddle attachment or just by massaging the cheese uh, so that it reincorporates. You can use a fork or a spoon or a penny saver to do so. Whatever your tools work for you and that you have at the time. But the general concept is just to retain some of the moisture into the cheese. And I think today I would like some creamy cheese. later. Oh my gosh, focus. <laughs> and get our 
seasonings dashed in there. Very unceremoniously. And for this, we'll just put it on a light paddle to incorporate the seasonings. While that's going, let's reserve a little bit of this whey. You just keep adding the whey until you get to the texture that you enjoy. This is one of those things where it's just a salt to taste sort of moment. along. That is actually looking pretty good. Much more my style. Taste it and see if we've done a good job seasoning. Warm cheese, freshly seasoned, amazing. <laughs> you guys have got to give this a try. Even if you don't have goats yourself, or if you don't have access to a dairy near you, you don't have to have raw milk to do this either. You can use store-bought pasteurized milk. However, I do find that using pasteurized milk or ultra-pasteurized milk will tend to lend a more goaty flavor and I prefer raw milk because it's so much more mild. Now that our cheese is all whipped up, let's roll it out and mold it in some plastic wrap. You can also use Tupperware containers or even uh, the cheesecloth itself if that's what you prefer. Rolling up your cheese in plastic wrap is super easy. Just think of it like making a burrito. arguably a little harder to do while holding a camera, but that's what happens when you buy really cheap tripods. If anybody's got any tripod recommendations for me, I am all ears. Might be a little bit excessive. Twist in the ends. And there you have it, one log of delicious, fresh goat's milk cheese, ready to be chilled in the refrigerator. This cheese is so easy, even my kids enjoy making it. So truly, go out and experiment and try new things. Uh, this can be flavored in so many different ways and has definitely always been the center of attention at any gatherings that we host. If you liked my video today, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified the next time we upload. See you around.